Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. We are back with the penultimate episode of The Penguin, HBO's newest show that is a crime drama based from the Batman villain played by Colin Farrell. This is the Cinema Wave Podcast. We're going to be talking to you guys all about the episode, our thoughts, our review, our discussion. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darian Scalamoni. I am joined by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. Vinny, how you doing? I, I'm good. I like this episode a lot. Uh, yeah, I felt like it was a bit of a shorter episode. But, I felt that too. Hmm. I don't know if it was because of the pacing. I think it was it was jumping, and they and they did a good job of jumping back and forth. We speculated. I don't know if it was last week or the week before that, but I know I've talked about it that we were going to get a flashback episode. Now this this whole penultimate episode is not a full flashback episode, hmm. but we do get the glimpses of Oz as a child. We get to see. Um, his siblings when they were alive we get to see francis as a younger woman uh as well as a reveal of rex calabrese hmm. who he's been idolizing throughout this whole season um but yeah the, the episode kind of flew by for me i don't know if it was because i was just so invested because i think time wise let me see if imdb has it yeah it was hmm. 46 minutes so it was a little bit shorter than i think some of these other ones were but what were your overall impressions coming out of episode um, seven titled The Top Hat? Hmm. It was uh, an explosive episode, no pun intended. Uh, um, actually, pun, pun, de- pun definitely pun, intended. Yeah, <laughs> pun definitely intended. Uh, I really enjoyed how this episode manages to, once again, I say this every week, but it subverts your expectations in a way that is subversive Mm -hmm. like let's jump right into it it starts with the flashback right and we're in we're in the uh we're in the bad the the history the younger years i was trying to find to the words to describe Mm -hmm. the younger years of oz and the Cobb family in general yeah yeah. and uh we see uh rex calabrese who He's the guy, the mobster that we assumed him to be, but he almost seems a little bit more aggressive than we thought he was. Like Oz, the way we he talked about him, always talked about him as if like Rex was like a friend almost, mm-hmm. right? But Rex doesn't even acknowledge him in this episode. Yeah. So that was really interesting to me. But also the big one being though we find the truth that oz was the reason why his brothers died and he essentially let them drown out of you know very spiteful kind of what's the word uh just very spiteful very uh um not pity but petty very petty reason Mm -hmm. and that was a shock to me and I, I I know we were talking off camera. Yeah, dude, I, I, I my mouth was like a gape. Yeah, like I couldn't believe that. And the way it plays out in the episode, it's not uh, it's not a criticism of the episode, but like, I mean, obviously we know that Oz has this um, this disability with his foot, and they uh, his brother wa- his older brother wants him to climb. It's climb up or climb down. Climb down. Climb yeah. down this ladder to come into the sewer system and he kind of like freaks out and he's like, you know, I hate this. Cause he was worried he was going to fall. And he kind of does it in a way that seems like I shouldn't say harmless, but it just feels like you're like, Oh, well he's going to go back hmm. and he locks him in there and he waits there for a second. And then he's like, no, nah, I'm going to leave him in there. And he locks his brothers in the sewer. Hmm. They have no way of getting out. Nobody can hear them. And this rainstorm comes, this drastic rainstorm. Um, And so much of it, I think, actually plays into the flashback with Rex. Because you really get a real idea of Oz and his... What what attention means to Oz. Hmm. He calls out to Rex multiple times, trying to, like, be witty with him and be like, Hey, I know who you are. Like, what's up? Like, I I recognize, like, that you're the man and, and all this stuff. How you doing? Rex, I respect you. And he's a kid and Rex is just like, what the, what the hell is this kid doing? Like, just keep, keep walking. Like, I don't know who you are. Like you're the, you're the gimpy kid with the leg. I don't need to deal with you. And he doesn't see it as that, like you alluded to. But then when he locks his brothers in the sewer, 
so much of that is is about getting the attention from his mother and having her all to himself the same way he wants gotham all for himself he cannot he wants everything all for himself the only person that we've seen only two people we've seen any indication so far of him having a little bit more sort of i guess care for excuse me is francis which is obvious and victor it gives me a very bad feeling about what's going to happen to victor yeah. but we see sort of when um we at the end of last week's episode that um sophie is waiting and uh this episode opens with oz sort of coming into the house and, and seeing that francis is gone and he wakes up victor and he's like where is she like go get an army like where like and he's like they took her i think there's so much nuance to the way they really showcase the relationship between oz and francis and what that means to him on a deeper level so much so that he would kill his brothers to have her all to himself. Hmm. Hmm. And it's shown in the end of the episode too, when they go to, di uh, they go out that night together and he's like, I'm going to make sure that you get everything you've ever wanted. It's yeah. almost like a romantic sort of thing. Hmm. It's like, uh, you know, the Oedipus complex. Yes. Yeah. It's like the reverse of the Oedip Oedipus complex. You know hmm. what I mean? Like it's definitely the yeah. same or the, I guess it is the Oedipus. Yeah, it is the Oedipus complex. And that, yeah, that's very much what it father, feels like. Your marry your mother. Yes. Yeah. It's very much what it feels like. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I hundred percent agree. I kind of got a little bit of those vibes, uh, in the previous episode or maybe it was two episodes ago. When she comes out of the bathtub. Yeah. Uh, well not particularly that, but the, them lying in bed together, just them kind of sharing more intimate moments. But mm -hmm. also I kind of brushed it off as like, oh, maybe it's mother and son just kind of comforting each mm -hmm. other. Uh, but yeah, in this week, we see this really twisted side of Oz that's always been there, right? We've known it, right? We've seen it within his adulthood. But here we see it like... I guess the origin of it, even though where it's like, it doesn't even spawn from a particular thing. It just kind of uh, grew very childishly and he's just held on to it. It's like a real it's, jealousy that he has. You hmm. kind of see it in the beginning, but it's hard if you're not really looking for it. Yeah. The nuance of like when he's sitting there and he's having these moments with his mother and then his brothers come in and then she's dancing with them and she can, she can be free flowing with them and she jokes around with them even like in that moment where um he's having a conversation with her and then the brothers end up underneath the table and they like ruin what she's doing and then she just kind of brushes it off and she's like it's all good like and she keeps playing the game with them and oz is like that's not the way i look at my my ma <laughs> like you know what I mean? like that's the, he has a real animosity towards anybody that he feels would wrong his mother even if it's his own brothers and his own blood yeah 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 it's it's very twisted, but in a way Definitely. that's like, yo, this is he's a Batman villain, so it's great to see, you know. But yeah, this episode was so subversive in that way, and also when it comes to everything else that came right, I wasn't expecting Salvatore Moroni dies via heart attack. Heart attack, yeah, yeah. and it almost feels like it feels like a Sopranos moment. It's yeah. very, it's kind of funny. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is like straight out of the Sopranos in the best way possible where it feels very comedic. It feels like something like literally something would happen with Tony Soprano, like mm -hmm. fighting a dude and, and this dude just dies on the spot and he's like, the fuck are you doing? You, you fucking give up on me? Is that fucking all you got? Right. And I thought it was, uh. I thought it was very comical in a way. It might have been like a Deus Ex Machina type of deal. I could see that being a complaint where it, oh, we have to get rid of this significant person that's going to be conflict to Oz and we have no other way of doing it. So let's just have it be like that. But I mean, then again, there are other ways of doing it. This was a way that was subversive and funny, something that, is fresh for an audience which mm -hmm. i appreciate rather than him just being shot yeah. well i love that it's also authentic like like you were saying it could have been something that was very convenient yeah but instead and it is in a, in a sense but it's also authentic to the way that oz responds to it happening hmm. which is what i respect so much about whether that's the writing or that maybe colin even improv that i don't know 
But that moment where he's like, get up, Sal. Yeah. He's like, come on, yeah. fight me. And it's yeah. like, he's dead, dude. He's dead. He's on the ground. He's dead. He's not breathing. Yeah. And then he shoots him like five times so that if anybody recovers the body, he's like, I did this. You tell him that I did this. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's so reminiscent of his character. And it's why, like you said, it just continues that the show is just so riveting because it throws you off in ways that you're not expecting there's another moment that happens you get like three or four moments like that in this episode you get um obviously the moment with the brothers that moment the other one for me is when sophia goes and sees her i think it's her niece right or young yeah, cousin her, niece, her niece, niece in uh the children's shelter that she's staying in and she goes in with the intent of not necessarily telling her that she was the one responsible for killing everybody that's a falcone and then when she notices the scratches on her um that she's like self-harming she changes the tune and there was another moment where i was just like oh my god like the the ability that this show has to do that hmm. and to make it feel like it's an and it is an important moment that really also plays into sophia as a character that sophia would never want to hurt a child because she's been in that situation before and she would never want that to happen to her niece. Hmm. It's just so remarkable in terms of the talent and the ability of the writers to constantly surprise us as viewers on like what's going to happen and also keep the story going in a way where you're still compelled and you want to see so much more out of this character and out of this world, which I think is really a credit to, to Reeves even for creating this character in the way that he did and having such an imprint on this version of penguin. Cause we talked about very early on how like the only other penguin we had ever seen was like Danny DeVito's penguin. And it's, it's so not what they're doing with Colin, which is why I respect it so much. It's so individual, but there's still so many nods to like the uh, symbolism of what the penguin represents for Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean the whole sewer, Right, hundred percent. I mean, I think of Tim Burton's Batman Returns of how like he he was baby and he like drifted off into the sewer and lived with these penguins and grew up as this amalgamation. And they the whole episode is within the sewer. It's within mm -hmm. the we're not it, you know it's the abandoned tunnel system that's also connected yeah, to yeah. the sewer, right, and rain system. But that in a sense feels so penguin and it's like connecting the bliss operation and their hq at that which the whole episode takes place in with the backstory and the or the quote-unquote origin of why he is what he is to that same place is so such a like little nod but so it, it's it's a perfect example of like less is more it's it works so well it's so just wow like they really understand what it means to build a character and treat uh this version of the penguin still as the penguin in a respectful and uh a respectful and I'm trying to use a better word grounded good uh, but good way yes <laughs> you know well i think also like you were just talking about with the sewers because that's one i i've been thinking about too but also, like, so, again, when people come before this show existed or before the Batman existed, when you talk to people about what the Penguin represents to them, whether it would be Danny DeVito's version, which is a lot more like a like a person-Penguin hybrid. Yeah. But the initial design for what the Penguin is is like a cigar-chomping, cane-twirling gangster. Yeah, yeah. And to have someone like a Rex Calabrese be somebody that Oz idolizes and ideally wants to become it makes sense for where our character most likely is going to end up at the end of the show right which is also great that they interweave that realism into it the other thing like a, a subtle thing well you could call it subtle you can call it like obvious but in this episode you get like us sitting down and constantly watching the same movie with his mom called top hat um with fred astaire with mm. tuxedos and umbrellas yeah. and I was just about to it's say just that. like this is so perfect like you're doing it in, a, in an authentic way where you totally understand that this is this is exactly what oz wants to become and he will do nothing 
to stop at it. And you've seen that constantly throughout the show that he's formed partnerships with Sal and he's formed partnerships with Sophia and Victor and, and going behind the backs of people. And, and now he's working with every other smaller crime syndicate in the city to go against Sophia and Sal. So it's just so great to see that they have so much care with the character. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and they're treating mm -hmm. it like something that is, we've talked about this. It's not, it's not like, this is not to say Marvel doesn't take things seriously, but sometimes it's like, oh, well, we just need to make sure that we hit these marks because this is what the character represents. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're doing it in a way that feels so much more thought out. It, it just feels like there's a real identification for who this version of the penguin is. And I love that he's not even the penguin. Like he doesn't even take on the moniker of the penguin because it's such an insult to him mm. that he just goes by, he won't even go by Oswald Cobblepot, which again, in a sense, like the name Oswald Cobblepot is kind of hilarious. Like it's, it's, it's a silly name yeah. shortening it to Oz Cobb to, to get that extra layer of realness and authenticity. I just think is, is such a credit to the way that they're, they're kind of forming the show week after week. Yeah. And I a hundred percent agree. I think this is just riveting television. Uh, I know we, we've said it every week thus far, but it really is. And, and the fact that we came into this, at least for me, like great premiere episode. I remember that first episode was incredible, but like we were hesitant. Mm -hmm. We were like, yo. Can they keep this up yeah. week after week? Yeah, and they did and they have. And I am very very confident that the finale is going to be a banger because everything else has been a banger so yeah. i mean i am i'm very excited for what's to come and, and i mean jumping ahead like what is to come right we we see vic once this episode at the very beginning he sent off to, to uh gather all the other gangs that he made a partnership in the last episode but now the bomb went off and it almost had this maybe not as big as the Riddler in the end of the Batman, but also affects a very, uh, you know, the, Oz has wanted to be this hero of the, the, the lower class, right? And now as a uh, catalyst due to his actions has destroyed an entire block essentially maybe not him directly but yes. because of his actions a bomb went off that was targeted towards him and it set off an entire block where lower economic people live and that's the opposite of what he wants to do mm -hmm. so i mean you know it's nothing like gotham being flooded at the end of the batman but it's still a a big thing that just went off so I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with Sophia, what's going to happen with the Penguin and Oz's relationship as a street gangster if the truth comes out of like, hey, he was involved in this. Yeah, know? I was thinking like you were just talking about with the, with the literal hole that's in the ground after the explosion. Like it's such a natural progression from what we see with the corruption and the implication of crime in Gotham, hmm. like, and how Gotham is just in this dire strait right now. Like yeah. within months of each other, we get the flooding of the, of the uh, lower districts. And now we have this ginormous <laughs> explosion that happens in the middle of Gotham. And, yeah. and like you said, in the, in the poorer communities that are already affected by what came previously. And so I'm excited to see if there is like a, like an implication with, with GCPD, like if there's going to be like a Gotham city element, police department element, to the end of this series or going into batman part two because we know we're getting gordon back um they had discussed maybe doing a gotham city show so that's always interesting to see maybe they kind of circle back to that because of this um and what's to come with with not only oz but sophia as well like now we have sophia basically having nothing to lose like at this point she's like i just want to see him suffer i want to see oz suffer i think francis is a goner I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that it's going to have to be something where either Oz loses or again, it's like there has to be some sort of sacrifice for him to end up on top. And I don't know exactly what that looks like hmm. because I'm constantly shocked. I don't even want to predict really what they're going to do with it, but we know we're going to get a showdown. We know we're going to see Sophia with her henchmen or whoever else is left. And Julian Rush is also obviously involved in that. 
um, she's in possession of, of Oz's mother right now. And, and Oz gets knocked out cold at the very end of the episode. And it looks like he's going to be brought to where Sophia is. And like you said, Victor is assembling this army of these people now that he has as his believers. Mm. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see where we end up um, at, at the end of the series. I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also like, I just, I don't want it to end. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't want the ride to end. And the good news is like, realistically, we're going to get some sort of continuation with this when we get to Batman part two in 2026. Um, we did, I sent you this on Instagram and we've speculated on it. So maybe we could spend just a minute or two on it. But the cool thing is that it seems like, cause Renzi Feliz said in an interview uh, that this was intended to be a limited series. Hmm. This was not supposed to go multiple seasons. It had a complete story. Um, and Shogun was the same thing. And now we're getting two more seasons of Shogun, right? But Reeves has said that they want to do more spinoffs and they're going to be character centric. Uh, some of the ones that were already being thrown out were Catwoman, obviously. And Gordon was another one that they've kind of thrown out. Um, I don't know if they go in a direction, like maybe doing a Joker thing with Barry Keoghan as an introduction to his version of the character, which could be cool. Hmm. What did you think about that idea? And are you cool with Penguin being sort of a finalized story by the end of this oh yeah i want the penguin to be a finalized story because i mean who's to tell what happens with his story in the batman part two because you know this is going to lead directly into that um within the chronological order of this world but i want this to be a finalized story i want batman the world like hands down batman has the best rogues gallery mm -hmm. and we're probably not going to see a lot of that within the reeves universe just because a lot of his rogues gallery is very out there mm -hmm. right and this is a grounded crime drama world uh but he has a great rogues gallery he has a great supporting cast you know so there's so many characters that deserve you finalize the little like eight episode series, just like the penguin. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want them to go on for too long. I don't want it to be like CW's Gotham. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how many seasons they had, like 10 seasons or some shit. Yeah, That's yeah. just me making up a number, but like, like, no, this, these should be like character pieces mm -hmm. and like it builds to a greater world. Right. So that's what I want. I want, I, I would be, wouldn't be opposed to a Catwoman. Uh, but like I said, I think they're also like, he, the Batman IP has so many great characters and we have yet to see really a, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. Yeah. I'm so down for it. Just, just make things that are interesting yeah. and, and get characters that are interesting. Like don't, don't be doing the same, like, three characters you, you know don't want I mean? to see a joker we already saw a riddler we don't need to see the same character sort of being recycled exactly yeah exactly i totally get that well i do think that there's a lot of room for innovation and uh the the direction that they're already going in with with matt reeves's batman universe has been really great and we've loved the ride that we've been on so far i also just want to give a quick shout out to emily mead who plays the younger version of francis i'm a mm. huge fan of her she was great in another hbo series called the deuce thought she was great as young francis in this episode and we're going to see her again in the, in the finale next week um just really excited with wh where we're going to end up but again oh yeah sad that we have to end this journey because it's been such a great ride hmm. that we've been on the whole entire time but yeah. um we'll be back next week covering the finale it's going to be me Vinny, and zach's going to be here for the finale he hasn't been on all season but he wanted to uh stop by so we could do the finale together so excited to talk about what the end of this is going to look like, what the future of the Batman universe looks like and, and the implications that kind of come with the aftermath of, of the end of the penguin, but really excited to talk about it. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying our episodes. As I said, we have a whole playlist now on YouTube where you guys can watch all of our penguin coverage from the very beginning. So be sure to check that out. Give this video a like, if you can and comment your thoughts on episode seven of the penguin and the show in general, are you guys really enjoying the direction that they're going with the show? Are you loving it as much as we are? Do you think it's a little overhyped? Cause I know a lot of people are coming into it now a little bit later. They wanted to binge the show leading up to the finale. So I've, I've talked to some people who are doing that and I totally understand 
that method of watching as well. But also you guys can follow us on social media. Uh, all that stuff is below me right here. And in the description of the video, um, we cover all things film and television here on the channel. We have interviews with other people in the industry as well. A lot of exciting stuff we're covering in November. Um, some aftermath stuff that we did at the film festival we just covered. And a lot of other exciting stuff for you guys this month, like Gladiator 2 and Wicked and Arcane and Yellowstone. A lot of really good stuff we're going to be covering. So just signing off, I am Darian Scalamoni. And I'm Vino Abano. And we'll see you guys next time. This is The Culture.